What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Menace Forum NAB6 Mini PC. Now I've seen images of this and I do think that the case itself looks really good. It's a very sleek little mini PC. And like a lot of their mini PCs, you can pick this up in a bare bones option or you can go up with the RAM and storage. This one here happens to have 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. So I've seen images of this and I did think it looked pretty good. Uh, we've got plenty of I.O. here. Really like the design, plenty of ventilation on each side here. And uh, taking a look around back, this does support 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And if you opt for the non bare bones version, you will get Wi-Fi 6 with this unit. If you do end up purchasing one of these, inside of the box, you're gonna get a six foot HDMI cable. We've also got a face amount, some hardware and adapter for a 2.5 inch drive because we've got room in the bottom of this to add that extra storage and a 120 watt power supply. Taking a look at the I.O. up front here, we've got one USB Type-C port. This is USB 3.2. We've also got two full-size Type-A ports, also USB 3.2, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Not much happening around the sides here, but we do have plenty of ventilation for this built-in cooling system. And around back, we've got two more USB 3.2 ports, two full-size HDMI ports, and these will support 4K60 out. Plus, we've got dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. With these mini PCs, we usually see dual Ethernet, but one of them usually resorts to being only a single gig. Both of these are 2.5 on the new NAB6. And finally here, we've also got two more USB Type-C ports. Now, one of these is USB 3.2, the other is only display out. So we've got that extra video out port here, utilizing that Type-C port. Now, if you end up getting the bare bones unit, just keep in mind it's really easy to get in here and upgrade or add everything you need. We're just gonna push down right on the top. It's got a spring-loaded mechanism. And now we can easily access the internals here. And uh, this one here actually came with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running in dual channel and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. But you might notice this SSD has a new cooler on it. We've got a fan cooler for these little M.2s and it does come in handy to keep those speeds up because this does utilize PCIe 4.0 SSDs and they can get quite hot. When it comes to RAM, we've got dual channel SODIMM DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz and we can go up to 64 gigs in this unit. Now I'm going to jump right into the specs, but I want you to keep in mind that uh, I've got the lower end version. This is the i5 version over on their website right now. I believe they're only selling the i7 version in the U.S. Not exactly sure how it ended up with this one. But for the CPU, we've got the i5-12450H. 8 cores, 16 threads, 4 performance cores up to 4.4 gigahertz, and 4 efficiency cores up to 3.3. Like I mentioned, this will support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. The built-in iGPU is Intel UHD with 48 execution units at 1200 megahertz. Storage can be handled by either that M.2 SSD or a 2.5 inch drive SSD that we can mount right in the top of the unit. Comes with all the hardware and cabling to get that installed. This one did come pre-installed with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 and we're going to be running Windows 11 on this PC. So I need to go ahead and get this set up. Uh, the operating system is already pre-installed. I just need to install some applications that we're gonna be testing. Okay, so I've got everything up and running. I've got a bunch of stuff installed and I've already run some benchmarks. Now, uh, the first thing I always like to take a look at with these mini PCs is just what kind of TDP this is running at. And from the BIOS on this, we can actually up it, but I wanted to leave it at that stock TDP. This chip can pull quite a lot of power. And uh, we'll go ahead and check it out here. Run a quick stress test. Core temp, we're at 45 watts. This chip can actually go up to 80 if we wanted it to. We could use a third-party application or adjust the TDP from the BIOS, but uh, with this, we're gonna leave it right here. Temps stay nice and chilly here at 45 watts, but uh, remember, if you need a little more out of that CPU, you can always up it. But overall, even just at 45 watts, got a very quick system here. Uh, if you wanted to use this for web browsing, email checking, uh, everyday you know, web browsing, you're not gonna have an issue. Head over to this site here. Everything loads up really quickly. All the images populate. So web browsing, we're good to go here. You could even do some light video editing and photo editing on this machine with uh, the stock iGPU that we have here, which isn't quite as powerful as some of the other 12th gen integrated graphics that we've seen, but it will get you by. 4K video playback test. We'll go ahead and full screen this. Stats for nerds make sure we're at 4k 
These Intel chips are great at 4K video playback, whether you want to stream from your favorite website or uh, even YouTube here, as you can see, 4K60. Also, if you wanted to install Plex here or just run from an internal or external drive, 4K 60fps playback is going to work out great on this setup. Next thing I wanted to do was run a few benchmarks, and first up we've got Geekbench 6. We're coming in with a single core of 2163 and a multi of 7681. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark, Wildlife came in with a 7268, and finally Night Raid with an 11202. Obviously, this has fallen far behind newer AMD integrated graphics, especially the RDNA 2 based graphics and something like the uh, 6800U. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this thing handles gaming, but you also got to keep in mind that this isn't using the higher end Iris graphics. We've only got 48 execution units here, but the higher end Iris XE graphics use 80 to 96, so it is on the lower end of integrated graphics with these Intel chips. First up, we've got GTA 5, an older one. Definitely kind of wanted to start with this. I knew we'd have a good time with it. 1080p, normal settings. We can get an average of around 65 FPS. So, you know, turning V-Sync on here, just locking it down at 60, you're going to have a really nice time with this game. But it is an older one. And a lot of these older games will perform quite well at 1080p and even 900p, but when you get up to the newer AAA stuff, that's where this thing's going to really struggle. And, uh, you know, we've got a lower end iGPU here. But I've got a few more games that I want to test, like uh, one of my favorites, OG Skyrim 1080p, original Skyrim at 1080p normal settings, another great experience here. You can run these all day long. Cuphead, Dead Cells, the new Ninja Turtles games, uh, emulation is also going to work out really well on this. But like I mentioned, when we get up to the newer AAA games, you will see the struggle just given that iGPU that we have here. Also wanted to test one fighting game, so I went with Street Fighter V, where at 1080p, medium settings, you usually have to drop this down to a medium low, but uh, we're all at medium here. So obviously there are games that are going to run on this iGPU, but uh, like I mentioned, when we move up to the newer AAA games, that's where this thing's going to really struggle. So the next game we're going to be taking a look at is Cyberpunk 2077. 720p low settings. I've locked it at 30 FPS just to give us that stable frame rate, or at least try to get it stable there. This actually averages around 34 FPS set up like this, so uh, it's not the best gaming experience when it comes to these newer AAA games. Another thing I was interested in checking out was just total system power consumption, and I'm going to tell you right now, we're at a 45 watt TDP. This can pull a lot more if we took it up to, let's say, 80 watts, because this can burst out at up to 80 watts. So I do think that we could hit around 100 watts in total power consumption with this thing. But at the stock TDP of 45 watts, at idle, it's pulling 10 watts from the wall. And by the way, I use a kilowatt meter while this is all plugged in running. Average gaming, 61 watts. And the maximum burst that I saw this jump up to was 83 watts. And it kind of backs right back off. But keep in mind, that's more of an extreme test, so that 120 watt power supply that comes with this unit at the stock TDP is more than enough. Even if we upped it to 65 watts on, you know, just the base TDP, we'd have plenty with that 120 watt power supply. So when it comes down to it, using this mini PC as your everyday desktop solution for web browsing, 4K video playback, email checking, document editing, photo editing, and even light video editing, it's going to be fine. Indie games and older PC games are also going to run at full speed, but I wouldn't run out and pick this up specifically for AAA gaming. As you saw in this video, it really does struggle with that iGPU being a lower end Intel UHD iGPU. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I personally do like the design of this. I think it looks really sleek. And when it comes to the CPU performance, I mean, we've got plenty of power here with this i5, just kind of lacking in that iGPU department. If you're interested in learning more about the Menace Forum, NAB6, I'll leave some links in the description. And if you've got any questions or want to see anything else running on this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, 
Thanks for watching.